So you guys are telling me you want more vlogs fixing PCs and all that stuff. And so what we've got right here on the table is a person who emailed me kind of out of desperation where they said they had an RTX 4090 that was not working properly on their mini ITX system. The CPU is a 5800X3D and also the RAM, I believe is 32 gigabytes of DDR4 and then on an MSI B550 mini ITX motherboard. Now it works fine. The whole system works fine with an RTX 3070. However, the moment they put in the 4090, they just get sporadic problems and they're just having a hard time. Now, as soon as I saw the RTX 4090 Supreme, in particular the Supreme, I was kind of shocked. I had to take on this fix right here because actually recently I had a previous um, person who's bought a PC office. I put in a 4080 Supreme on that PC and essentially the GPU went faulty and then I replaced it and I actually did a video a while ago, I'll put the video up here, where MSI's warranty was actually really good in Australia, I'm not going to fault that. But then that same 4080 Supreme has now come back to me again and it's got about I think like 10 months warranty left, but it's it's gone again, it's got faulty I think VRAM or something's just gone faulty again on this card and then the funny thing was when I was at the place they actually had the failure rates. I actually got to see behind the scenes the failure rates on these GPUs. And it was in the, I guess, area of around 10% because they had sold around 100 of these units and they had a nine fail already. So I was thinking, wow, that's an incredible failure rate. I'm going to say a disastrous failure rate for an RTX series card. So what I'm going to check out here today is a couple of things that are going to be pretty basic. And that is, I think it could be the riser cable or I think it could be the GPU. And so we're gonna to get to the bottom of this in a very simple and easy to diagnose fashion. And we've also got Andy in the background. He is happy to uh, sort of donate his PC and also fix us up after the fix is done. Yeah, well, uh, I struggled with it for a full day and uh, I put the old GPU back in it, the 3070, and it works fine. So. Hopefully uh, you've got the answer. All right, and we will have the answer right after today's video sponsor. Do you need to get Windows activated and don't want to spend stupid amounts of money on a key? Well, if that's you, then today's video sponsor, SCD Keys, has you covered. For as little as $21 for Windows 11 Pro or $13 for Windows 10 Enterprise, you can get activated instantly. And also, don't forget to use the coupon code BFTYC for a big juicy discount. Links in description below. Welcome back to Tech Yes City, and the first order of business on this 4090 Supreme is to essentially just run it in Fermark, give it a good 10 minutes on the stress test here. Now, what Fermark does is it just not only maxes the GPU to 100%, it maxes it so hard that the clock rate on the GPU itself actually drops down much lower than you would otherwise have it if you were playing games, for instance. So I really do, nowadays, I actually use this I used to use Unigine Heaven in the past for flipping PCs, but now I just use this benchmark exclusively, not only for stress testing my PC, but also if I'm trying to find faults in a graphics card in particular. And so the beauty about this is also you can run it on really low resolution if you wanna sort of stress the CPU and the GPU together. So really amazing program and it will find a fault very quickly. So we're just gonna let this run out for a, another, I can even give it another good five minutes at least and then just make sure that the GPU isn't the problem here. And then we'll get onto this PC. So what we've got right now is, wow, we've got <laughs> kind of like a throttling GPU. This definitely needs a thermal paste change ASAP. But what I'm checking for here is more so the fact the GPU usage, and we're using this in Fermark right now. So what we do with Fermark, especially if we want to test out what's going on with this system here, especially since Andy has said the GPU, the 3070 here works fine on the system and everything looks like it's responsive as well. So the responsiveness of the system is fine. One thing I also do check for on systems where even if I'm looking for GPU problems, we've got here a 3070, everything seems fine. I, I mean, definitely have to change the thermal paste again on that GPU, but what I'm going to look for now is just changing over to the 4090 and seeing what's going to happen here. And the biggest thing that we're gonna look at is we're actually gonna come in close here and you'll see those horrid temperatures right there. That's a separate issue. But 
what we're going to look for is mainly with this GPU usage, if we're, especially if we're looking out for a riser cable, that's the problem. We'll see this GPU usage here just be like sporadically going down. Even if it's like once every 10 seconds or whatnot, you, this should just be pegged at 100% on a normal system, especially in Fermark, or at the very least like 99%. It just should be pegged at this level and just working 100% <laughs> in all essence. So let's change over right now to this RTX 4090, this Supreme, and see what the problem is exactly that Andy's experiencing, but also we should hopefully see better temperatures too. So straight away, we've uh, just installed the riser externally with the GPU. And the main reason for doing this is just to save us time so we don't have to reinstall it back into the case. But the first thing I've noticed is just the boot is extremely slow. Like, it, essentially, it's not even booting, which usually indicates, yeah, again, it's potentially a riser issue. So what we've got right here is a, a thermal Grizzly. Do you know the generation speed of this? Uh, it's a PCI E4. Uh, Gen 4, okay. Okay, so we've got a Gen 4 riser cable here, but that essentially is a bit of a weird one because this Gen 4 riser cable is working on a Gen 4 motherboard, so we really shouldn't have any speed limitations here. But what I'm gonna do essentially is change over to our trusty Gen 5 riser cable, which we've just had sitting here under some Allen keys, and we're gonna see if that just automatically fixes the boot problem to start with. So we've now got the PC running and it's booting up absolutely fine with the Gen 5 riser, but there is a serious problem. We're booting up fine. I noticed straight away there was a little bit of sluggishness when I went to boot up the uh, PC and get into Windows. So doing the responsive test, it was a little bit sluggish, but now you'll notice when we're running Fermark here at max ball, we got here essentially some real disastrous results here. So this is looking like, and again, we're talking about this GPU percentage here. Just look at it go. It is going from 99%, it's just dropping down to 41%, it's dropping down to 55%. And this is with a Gen 5 riser that's, I know, and I've done a lot of tests on this riser cable in the past, it's actually been perfect. It hasn't uh, missed a beat, at least with different motherboards. And when we tested out all these different motherboards and riser cables in a separate video, I'll put the link up here for you guys. What I was talking about was it's also dependent on the motherboard when you're using a riser cable. Hence why, like this is a big reason why for, for my main system here, I'm just not using a riser cable at all. I've got a mini ITX system, but I'm not using a riser cable. And that just essentially eliminates the headaches that are involved with riser motherboard I uh, guess handshakes that go on because there is something seriously wrong here, even with a riser cable that I know in the past has worked absolutely fine and has been working fine. So this is sort of like a new element for me, seeing this, like especially this combination here, be this bad. So essentially what we're gonna do right now is go into the BIOS and see if we can change around a couple of settings here to see if we can get this just to a smooth 100% and running absolutely perfect. So we've got the uh, GPU stopped down now to X8, X8 manually in the BIOS. I've also locked in XMP and just things like that. But opening up GPU Z with this combination here is, is extremely bizarre. We've got a bus interface that's unknown. So essentially we're gonna try and just reinstall the AMD chipset drivers. That might fix it. And we'll try rerunning the benchmarks. So essentially we're gonna keep just trial and erroring things until we can get that 100% in Fermark. And of course the PC just doesn't feel sluggish. Okay, 
so welcome to Riser Cable City here. And this is like, we tried to install the new chipset drivers and it basically, it came up with an error I've never seen before while trying to install the chipset drivers. So we're going, and now it's like, essentially now it's just like skipping and everything on the camera. So we're gonna get back into the BIOS again and we're gonna essentially lower the, uh, or essentially raise the latency um, on the, the limits on the PCI settings. See if that helps as well as dropping down to Gen 3, just to try and get this in a workable state. But yeah, wow. Okay. <laughs> just, just going to a black screen now. Oh, at least, at least it's progressing along here. We're trying to get into the BIOS. See that? I don't even need to start the benchmark for to know that this is just like something's not quite yeah, right. Yeah, it's toast. Like, I mean, I'll start it anyway. Yeah. But <laughs> but you know the figures are going to be shit straight yeah. off the bat. Yeah, like I just know this is exactly what you're looking at. Like you know that is stuttering, isn't it? This is horrible. So this is Gen three now, X eight, X four, X four. But we're just going to try Gen two as a last resort for this motherboard because actually in this motherboard, the MSI board, I can't, and I don't even know what happened then, it just closed itself. On the MSI board, there's no uh, actual latency settings to change either. So you're basically beholden to the um, mercy of just trying out different gen settings, at least on this B550i. So let's try gen two now, guys, gen two. So we are now finally here with some good and also quite bad news and that is we have the gpu now working with the riser cable but it is in gen 2 so that's gen 2 x16 speeds on a 4090 but in firmark at least in firmark we're getting max performance here we're getting gpu usage at 100 percent. but when you go to games that is definitely not going to be the case however some games will see performance drops on gen 2 with a rtx 4090s but besides that, the computer is now no longer sluggish and everything works fine. But you may be wondering then, what is the issue here with this PC? Like what, breaking it down, what has exactly happened here? And it's a matter of the actual motherboard and riser combo just not working. Now, I know for a fact this riser cable is actually capable of X16 Gen 5 speeds. I've tested this and validated it on other motherboards. So more or less, it's essentially the motherboard, but this is where the irony kicks in. And that is if you plug this GPU direct into this motherboard, it's going to work absolutely fine. And basically when we look at the issue here, it's more so to do with the motherboard in particular with latency. And so what I mean by this is there's set latency times that have been programmed into the BIOS. And when you put in a riser cable, you essentially need to loosen up those timings, but there's no way to actually manually change any of those timings and so it's reliant on MSI essentially releasing a BIOS update for this motherboard to then, I guess, auto detect if there's a riser in the PC and then adjust those timings to allow this 4090 to work. Because I know for a fact that this RTX 4090 right here, it will work absolutely fine without the riser cable in this B550 ITX board. But because we've got the riser cable in and we've got the build, the whole build and what it is, it's just not working properly unless you're on PCI Gen 2. But regardless of all this, we are pretty much 99% of the way here of having this PC fully functional. It's just a matter of whether Andy now wants to use his PC over Gen 2 with his 4090. So that's going to be up to him. I personally suggested that they just change to the a different ITX case, one that I'm using in my main PC. But again, each to their own with these problems. But one thing for sure is if you are having issues and you've got a riser cable in your build, that would actually be the first place to look at in your PC. And that's if you're having similar issues here, just skipping, uh, especially GPU usage in Fermark, just going all over the place. That's most likely going to be the riser cable in combination, of course, with the motherboard. Now, they, again, and this is the funny thing because we've tested out this riser cable in the past we know it's not the riser cable per se. So very interesting to check out this problem. At least we've got a solution here for the time being, but we're gonna have to talk to Andy and see what the go is and see what he wants to do exactly. 
And with all that aside, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video on diagnosing RTX 4090 on P550 and having problems in this ITX system. And also, love reading your comments down below. So if you've got similar experiences or if you know someone who's had problems like this and perhaps there was a setting or something you did to fix it, would love reading those comments as well. And with that aside, I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.